Anne, welcome to Metro Focus. Thank you. Now, Anne, what motivated you to write this terrific book, Lady at the OK Corral? Well, there's the spark, and then there's sort of all the stuff underneath. The spark was an email from a friend who said, did you know that Wyatt Earp was buried at a Jewish cemetery? <laughs> and I thought, well, that's impossible. Um, and so in a way, that was the spark, because it set me off and running to try and figure out, how did Wyatt Earp get there? It quickly led me to Wyatt Earp's Jewish wife. Like a lot of people who grew up in the 50s, you know, there I was in Jackson Heights, Queens, plunked mm. down in front of a black and white television set watching Wyatt Earp on television. You mean Wyatt Earp had a Jewish wife? Well, I didn't see that in the Hugh O'Brien right. version. So the idea that there was this Jewish woman in the picture, a Jewish woman from New York, I'm a Jewish woman from New York, that seemed improbable and, and fascinating. And then there's the gunfight itself, you know, the, the, the gunfight. Gun the most gun famous fight. gunfight in Western Absolutely. Florida. It has sunk its roots so deeply into our psyche that every day, I have a Google alert on OK Corral, every single really? day you see it to refer to anything from, you know, a teacher's union fight to a congressional <laughs> showdown. It's a metaphor. It's a trope that we think of. So the idea that the gunfight, which I thought was about politics and power and, and money, the idea that there was this woman, Josephine Marcus, who had a lover on both sides. Mm -hmm. That struck me as amazing. And then Wyatt Earp himself. I thought he was the guy with the white hat. Um, well, it, it turns out that it was really Josephine who put that white right. hat on his head and made it's sure it's really that a little gray. There. Although I like the white side of the hat. <laughs> more than the black side. I think the truth is, like most people, there was a lot of black and white um, in, in all of us. A lot of a lot of good and, and bad. But it was Josephine, really, who shaped the legend of Wyatt Earp. Well, and that was a revelation. What I found interesting in your book is that in the West, you didn't seem to confront much, if any, anti-Semitism. The prejudice came from within the Jewish community in the West. Talk about that a little bit. It's an incredible paradox, really. Um, and, and for many of us who grew up on the, on the East Coast, we don't know as much as we should about what life was like mm -hmm. on, the, on the West Coast. The San Francisco that Josephine grew up in when her family went from Prussia to New York to, to San Francisco was a highly stratified society. And the upper crust were the German Jews, and then there was everybody else. And Josephine's family was from Prussia, i.e. from Poland, and they didn't belong to that upper crust. And um, I believe that one of the reasons Josephine ran away from home to become an actress was because Josephine didn't want to be second-rate anything, yeah. and so she went off. You talk a lot about how she's unconventional, but what I found fascinating in the book is how she's a mix of being unconventional and very conventional. She lived with two men not being married to them, but nevertheless, she was the perfect wife to both of them uh, when, they were, when he, she was married to them, for one example. Yes. Josephine really was the lady at the OK Corral, and that title is in, in part ironic, because there were those two sides of her. On the one hand, she wanted to be like her sister, who was wealthy and very connected in San Francisco society, eventually. Um, but then there was the other part of Josephine, which I actually think is the real Josephine, and that's the adventurous, the woman who was always looking for the next adventure, the next fortune. Now, I understand that the students at the Macaulay Honors College, of which you are the university dean, that they helped you research this book. How'd that happen? Oh, well, it's one of my great privileges to be working with a student body that I think is the most interesting student body, um, not only in New York, but, but anywhere. Many of our students are immigrants. They really represent the future leaders of New York, um, and they bring incredible energy and intellectual drive and fire in the belly to, to everything they do. Um, and so I have had a series of Macaulay students who have worked with me on this project. Um, and I've learned so much from them. Um, from the young women, I've learned about how they view Josephine as, a, as a, an odd kind of modern feminist. Mm -hmm. Yes, one uh, who very much was tied to a series of men, but she was the woman behind the man and the mm -hmm. woman who shaped very much of, of their history. How does Macaulay fit in the, into the CUNY system? Macaulay is the Honors College of the City University of New York, and uh, we work as a partnership with eight of the colleges of the city. We have a campus in every borough. Um, we work very closely with the campuses, and the students have, in essence, a dual identity. They are students at Macaulay, but they are also students at City College. What's so interesting about that structure is that they are part of the, of the half a million 
CUNY students. You know, CUNY's footprint in the city of New York is unbelievable. Um, I don't think there's a, a business or an organization in New York that doesn't have CUNY alums and CUNY students working in it. So we have our students on the one hand sitting next to the, the working mother who's holding down three jobs to go to school, the returning vet from Afghanistan. They have that experience of the very, very broad CUNY student base. And then they have this slice of honors education, which really takes these very academically well-prepared students who come out of just a hundred high schools mm. in, in New York City and gives them not only a terrific education, but that sense of what leadership in New York is really all about. Well, Anne, congratulations for the wonderful book and for your work at Macaulay. Thank wonderful you. Wonderful institution. It's an honor to be here.